Hello everyone, this is Mario. Welcome back to my channel and to my group on my FTG career in Pro Cycling Manager. So today I'm going to continue and finish both Paris-Nice and Tirreno Adriatico. I still have two stages left in the French race and three in the Italian one. In the previous episode I got a few decent results but they were not really what I wanted. I didn't get any win. And it's now been two episodes without me getting any stage win. And so I can say that the team and the sponsor are now putting a bit of pressure uh, on top of me and my riders. So let's try to get some good results in this one. And so what's a better way to start this episode than with the Queen stage of Paris-Nice. It's going to take the riders from Nice to Col de Tourigny, 180 kilometers long, several tough climbs for the riders, three category two climbs and two category one climbs. The final two climbs of the day are category one. And this massive climb that will take the riders to the finish line, the Col de Tourigny, 15 kilometers at a 7.5% average. It's probably going to be the deciding factor for who is going to win the GC of Paris Nice 2019. So Thibaut Pinot is considered as the top favorite for today's stage. I hope I can live up to the expectation and that I can try to win the stage and take a bit of time over the other GC contenders. The top four riders in the GC are currently separated by a mere 23 seconds, so it's going to be a hard battle between them for the win. So we have now departed from Nice for this seventh and the Queen stage of Paris-Nice and when I was riding the time trial and I had a plus five with Thibaut Pinot I almost begged for a plus five in in this stage I didn't have that but I'm having a plus four race day condition for Thibaut Pinot I really hope I can take advantage of this and win the stage and some time a considerable amount of time actually with Thibaut Pinot today so I won't take any of my riders in the breakaway today, I will keep everyone in the peloton, but later on I may be the one uh, putting a strong pace in the final few kilometers and hills. We are on the second climb of the day to Côte de Gourdon, and I decided to put a bit of a pace with Jacopo Guarnieri in this one. Um, maybe I can try to drop or at least exhaust some of the teammates of the other teams that are going for the GC. Oh, and we had a fall. Reichenbach fell together with um, Arnaud Demar. Who else is here? Mike Tunison, Miguel Angel Lopez. And is this... No, it's Antonio Nibali, it's not Vincenzo. Oh, this is such a shame. I need to get back with, um, with Sebastian Reichenbach. Can I do that? And Miguel Angel Lopez is falling again. This is a really bad day for him. He's still in the race. He fell together with Simon Spilak. Also, before in the previous fall, um, Steven Kreischwick had to abandon the race. He was not contending for the GC for Jumbo Visma, but it's a really big loss for Primoz Roglic in this one. And so we are now on the penultimate climb of the day, 23 kilometers from the finish line. Already I'm getting really short of teammates by now. Thibaut Pinot is soon going to be alone with Sebastian Reichenbach and Valentin Madois and I think I will basically be a bit more cautious in this climb and then try to force the pace in the final one. And so as the riders in the breakaway start the ascension to Col de Tourigny we actually have more and more falls um, constantly and they are two minutes, well, now only one and a half minutes ahead of the peloton. And we are definitely going to win the stage from the peloton. Leo Vincent is finishing his work for Thibaut Pinot today. So I'm now using Sebastian Reichenbach, who won't last a long time as well. So this is going to be mostly about Thibaut Pinot going to the end. Because, well, I was expecting Reichenbach to last a bit longer. But when he fell and had to come back, he lost a lot of energy. And so with 10 kilometers to go, I'm putting Valentin Madois now to work for a bit to pull Thibaut Pinot. 
is not going to be able to do much. Uh, they are both Reichenbach and Madwa, both out of energy already. So, well, let's. There is an attack by Jakob Fuglsang. Can I follow this? I don't know if I should. He's really far behind. Uh, let's. No, let's keep the, the pace here. Let's stay behind. This would be a bit reckless. Now, I need to follow now. Now, I need to follow this attack. I was a bit distracted. Oh, can I get, get them back? This is not being easy. Tom Dumoulin is still here. Let's try to pace by ourselves. We now cut the riders in the breakaway. Vincenzo Nivoli and Richard Carapaz are going again. This, there are still 7 kilometers to go. I cannot attack now. Let's actually follow on the wheel of Roglic now. But he, he stopped his attack as well. Let's keep our own pace. Still 6 kilometers to go. And Tom Dumoulin is now the one trying to bridge over to the riders in the front. We have Vincenzo Nivoli, Richard Carapaz, Jakob Fuglsang and Warren Barguil. I'm going on the wheel of Tom Dumoulin. And actually maybe I will use the energy gel for Thibaut Pinot already and try to uh, pace harder uh, in a few kilometers. Or maybe even try to launch an attack. Let's drop the effort a bit. I don't really need to waste that much energy. Going on the wheel of Tom Dumoulin and let's try to launch an attack now. Let's see what we can do. Can we do something here? Let's now try to go at 80 maybe. Where are the other riders? They are not following. They are not being able to follow the attack of Thibaut Pinot. Let's drop the space a bit. I don't want to uh, waste too much energy. No one is able to respond. Oh, I'm going to win this. I'm going to win this with Thibaut Pinot. So Thibaut Pinot is now 700 meters from the finish line. He is 43 seconds ahead of everyone else. Let's try to increase the pace now a bit with him going to the finish line. Let's sprint, actually. And Thibaut Pinot is going to win the stage at the top of Col de Tourigny. And I think he's going to take the yellow jersey from Tom de Moulin. He won 45 seconds. So Thibaut Pinot wins the stage and will take the GC lead. So Thibaut Pinot in a really tremendous day wins at the top of Col de Tourigny. He got 44 seconds on the road over Tom de Moulin and Vincenzo Nibali and everyone else more than one minute behind. That final attack was really strong. He was really feeling strong today. And as I said, Thibaut Pinot is now the leader in the GC, 23 seconds ahead of Tom de Moulin. This is not over yet, there is still one final stage. After this stage, Arthur Vichot is the leader of the mountain classification. Caleb Ewan keeps the lead in the points classification, although only 8 points ahead of Thibaut Pinot. So who knows if Pinot can actually take this jersey as well in the final stage. In the Young Rider classification, Egan Bernal is the clear leader, almost 5 minutes ahead of the second rider, who is my rider, Valentin Madwa. What a better way to start this episode than with a fantastic win at the top of Col de Tourigny and to grab the leader's jersey in Paris-Nice. I'm really really happy with this one. I was so much in need of this win. And we are now on the 17th of March 2019. We have good news from our research and development. We have a new frame to be used in mountain stages and it's actually improving the stats um, in all three aspects of the, the frame, let's say it. I, I know that a lot of people say that equipment doesn't really matter for anything, but well, maybe this will help my team um, getting better results in mountain stages. Let's already test this in the next one. And so, without really understanding how PCM decides when to ride Paris-Nice or Tirreno Adriatico first, we are faced with Paris-Nice once again, so I will ride the final stage of the French race. So, with Thibaut Pinot in the lead of the race, I'm basically going to have to control the top riders in the GC. This stage is quite short, only 109 kilometers long, so those climbs actually are a bit steeper than they appear in the profile, but still I don't really expect a big gap to occur between the GC contenders. And so we are now starting this final stage of Paris-Nice. 
Thibaut Pinot on a plus 4 race day condition, Reichenbach and Madwa both on a plus 2. And I'm trying to go with Sebastian Reichenbach in the breakaway today. Let's see if the peloton is going to allow that. We have Adam Yates and Arthur Vichot as well in this uh, breakaway with us. Oh, and actually they dropped Reichenbach. Why? Why did they attack again? This is really weird. Well, let's just wait for other riders to come back to Reichenbach and then try to catch Vichot and um, Adam Yates. And so we are now about 50 kilometers from the finish line and on the longest climb of this stage, which actually isn't categorized, which is a bit surprising. In the meantime, I had Steve Morabito going for water, but is not going to be able to bring it back to Thibaut Pinot and Valentin Madwa. Also, Leo Vincent is getting really short of energy, so he won't be able to protect Thibaut Pinot any longer. So I think I will have to put Valentin Madwa in uh, service. Oh, maybe, maybe not. The pace dropped a bit in the peloton, so I will keep Leo Vincent protecting Thibaut Pinot for a bit longer. Oh no, and Thibaut Pinot has fallen. Oh no, 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 no. Oh, I cannot believe this. I cannot believe this. Please stand up. Please stand up. Come on, man. Oh, this did not just happen. I don't even know who else fell. Oh, come on. Come on. This... No. And why aren't you going to the front to pace? Come on. Get to the front, Pino. Hurry up, man. And the other ones, they need to come back. Oh, this did not just happen. Okay, he's catching back. He's catching back the other riders. Okay, 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 okay. So let's try to relay with Vincent and Madwa. Try to go back to the front and have Pinot here. Okay, I think everything is good. Because No, 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 this is not good. Oh my, he's so far behind the favorites. I need to... Oh, come on. I'm going to lose this. I don't believe this. I'm actually going to lose this race because Thibaut Pinot fell. So I'm almost catching up the riders in the front. I need to do this. Come on. Valentin Madwa is pulling in, at the front of this group. Then I still have... Um... Oh, no. No, Madwa, come on. Oh, come on, man. This everything is going wrong today. And so I finally managed to get Thibaut Pinot back to the group of the favorites. We have Tom Dumoulin and Vincenzo Nibali here, Geraint Thomas as well. But the energy levels of Thibaut Pinot are really short now. This is not easy. I don't know if I'm going to be able to survive this. So let's try to maintain the position now with Thibaut Pinot. We are reaching the top of this climb and I think I'm safe. So unless Pinot falls again, he is going to win this race. And so Alaphilippe attacked just close to the finish line. He's trying to win the stage. I still have Thibaut Pinot here in a good position. Let's increase his effort a bit. Two kilometers from the finish line. Geraint Thomas also trying to attack. I won't have a problem here and let's sprint for the line with Thibaut Pinot and the win is going to be for Julien Lafilippe. Thibaut Pinot finishes in the front group and so Julien Lafilippe won the final stage. It was a bit more intense than what I would have liked but I managed to hold on to the lead and so Thibaut Pinot wins Paris-Nice ahead of Tom Dumoulin and Vincenzo Nibali. The winner of the mountain classification was Arthur Vichot. In the points classification, in the end, Thibaut Pinot managed to snatch that one as well by a single point over Geraint Thomas and Caleb Ewan was third, two points behind the leader of FDG. Egan Bernal was the best young rider in this race and Groupama FDG was also the best team overall. So Thibaut Pinot managed to win his first season objective it was also the first objective of the team sponsor. They wanted a top 5 finish and we got a 
win. So I guess that the sponsor will be pleased with this result. So now going back to Tirreno Adriatico and coming from the strong performance in Paris-Nice, let's hope that the team spirit is increased by this one and that they can over excel in their abilities. This stage is very important for the GC of Tirreno Adriatico. We are going for this one with Rudy Molar in 8th in the GC, just about 30, yeah, 31 seconds behind Mikhail Kwiatkowski in the, in the GC. Rudy Molar is not among the top 10 favorites for today's stage, but still I will try to do my best to keep him with the strongest riders and at least not to lose a lot of time today and hopefully you will be able to keep his position in the top 10 after this one. And so now beginning stage 5 of Tirreno Adriatico with Rudy Molar on a fantastic plus 4 day, so he's having a 78 mountain in 80 hill stat and also really strong secondaries today. So yeah, this is looking really good for him to try and do something today. And also today I think I'm going on the breakaway with Anthony Roux. I don't really think he's going to be strong enough to try to win the, the stage. But well, let's try to do something with him in this one. And so today we have 20 riders in the breakaway. At a point there were 21, but Jan Hirt wasn't able to continue in this group, so he got dropped. They don't even have two minutes over the peloton, so it's not going to be easy to survive. And so now with about 80 kilometers to go in this stage, we have about one and a half minutes, not even that, separating the riders in the breakaway from the peloton. And we are starting the first proper climb of the day, the first proper hill. So let's see how this is going to work out until the end now. And so we are now on the first ascension of Recanati. This is absolutely incredibly steep. And the riders in the breakaway are already caught. I have now Anthony Roux here trying to do some work. We will soon try to do some work for um, Rudy Molar. All my riders are getting really short of energy now. I think I will have to use um, Anthony Roux to protect Rudy Molar. And we are now on the penultimate climb of Recanati. And I need to use Konovalovas already to protect um, Rudy Molar. It's not being easy to keep in this group. The pace is really tough to follow. But Rudy Molar is still feeling pretty strong today. So yeah, maybe he will conserve his top 10 at, at the end of this stage. There are 23 kilometers still to go, there is um, still a long to go, but he is feeling quite strong. We now have some attacks with Alessandro De Marchi going on the right, is trying to make a move. Let's try to follow now with Rudy Molar the best way we can. I don't want to be dropped in this one, but there is a small gap being created with uh, Alessandro De Marchi and Roman Bardet, let's now try to maintain position here in the same group as Alejandro Valverde. Mikhail Kwiatkowski is also here. So, 6.5 kilometers to go. Rudy Molar still looking strong and the final ascension of Recanati remaining. Let's try to win this stage, maybe. Can we do this? There are other riders that are probably stronger than Rudy Molar namely Alejandro Valverde. So let's try to move to the front of the group and use the energy gel now on Rudy Molar. Let's see what we can do. Maybe try to go on the wheel of Alejandro Valverde. Maybe that's a good option. Oh, Molar is losing his position a bit at the moment. Let's try to keep on the wheel of Alejandro Valverde. I think that's a sensitive choice, but it's this is, uh, they are a bit behind, let's try to move a bit further ahead in the group. But I don't think Rudy Molar is going to be able to win the stage, he's wasting a lot of red energy. And Alessandro De Marchi is still in the front. Let's see what we can do. Can I take the stage win? I won't be able to do that, I think. Let's see, Rudy Molar, go on. Give your best shot, he's not going to win it. 
and the winner is going to be Alessandro De Marchi, followed by who is going to be second? It's Mikhail Kwiatkowski, Jack Haig third, and Rudy Mollard was fourth ahead of Rowan Dennis. Maybe I could have won this one, but the win was for Alessandro De Marchi. Rudy Mollard got a bit far behind in the final climb and then he could not challenge properly for the win. In the GC, Mikhail Kwiatkowski keeps the lead and now Alessandro De Marchi is second in the GC. In the meantime, Rudy Mollard is now fourth, so he got into the top 5, 37 seconds behind Mikhail Kwiatkowski. Rudy Mollard also keeps the lead in the mountain classification, 37 points. The leader in the points classification is Mikhail Kwiatkowski and the best young rider is Giulio Ciccone. So those final few hills, they are incredibly steep and they really tore down the peloton. Many of the favorite riders lost time today. I'm surprised that Alejandro Valverde was only 10th in the stage, losing 44 seconds today. But Rudy Mollard, with his plus 4 race day condition, managed to not get dropped today. So in the GC is now 4th. So is in the top 5 as the sponsor wants. Let's see if I can hold this until the end. So now going to the penultimate stage of Tirreno Adriatico. This one is considered as a flat stage. Although it does say that the end is quite irregular. There is a tiny little climb or hill or bump or something going to the finish line. I don't know if that is going to affect the outcome of the final sprint or not. but Punchy sprinters are being considered among the top favorites for today's stage. And the riders are now going for the sixth stage of the Tirreno Adriatico. Today I won't take any riders in the breakaway, so the goal is to win the stage with Marc Sarre. And so we are now 115 kilometers from the finish line, and there are five riders in the breakaway group who have over nine minutes on the peloton. They aren't really the strongest riders, although we do actually have Victor Campanart and Nils Pollitt in this group, so I don't really know how the peloton allowed them to gain such a big advantage. I now put Bruno Armirey trying to do some work at the front of the peloton to try to close the gap a bit so that it doesn't become irreversible. And with 77 kilometers to go in the stage, or 81 for the peloton, Bruno Armirey alone managed to drop the gap between the breakaway and the peloton to about five and a half minutes. So he's doing an amazing work at the front of the peloton. No one else is working. My team is the only one working for, I don't know, maybe a hundred kilometers now. We still have three and a half minutes to catch up the breakaway. So this is getting a bit tight. I think I will need to increase the effort by my riders relaying at the front of the peloton, but then I may destroy my chances of making a sprint train. So yeah, I may be working for someone else to take the stage win. And so this is looking harder and harder with about 20 kilometers to go. Bruno Armirey is done for the day, Conoval Avers will soon be done as well, and now, oh yeah, this is so amazing, now we have other teams finally doing something with 20 kilometers to go and with my riders basically destroyed, the ones I had for a sprint train, now the other teams are doing something and Victor Campanart is attacking at the front. I don't know what was the brilliant idea of letting Campanart and Polit to gain such a big advantage in a stage like this. And it's obvious now that we won't be able to take the stage win. Um, I mean, this was so stupid. Well done, Jumbo Visma and the Koenig. You did so well. Amazing work. You let the other ones go away and didn't do anything and then just worry in the final in the final 20 kilometers when there was basically no chance of taking the win. That's really smart. Oh no! What what are you doing, Rudy Mollard? Oh come on! You are not going for water in the final 10k! 
You cannot even do that. Oh, this is such a mess. This stage is such a mess. I hope he doesn't lose any time today. Let's try to start sprinting with Stefan Kung now. Who is going to win the stage? The stage win is going to be for... I'm not seeing it. it takes so long. Victor Campanart takes the win. Let's start sprinting now with Marc Sarre. It is not going to take anything from this. LD Viviani is the first from the peloton. Rudy Mollard is a bit far behind. Let's sprint. I don't think there's going to be any cuts here. So he's going to be fine. But why on earth did he go for water bottles near the end? I know I let my riders out of water, but that was basically because I had most of them working to bring the breakaway back. Oh, I'm so pissed off right now. Yeah, yeah, enjoy your freaking win, Campanart. Oh, you were gifted a win by the Koenig and Jumbo Visma. How on earth were the other teams not worried that you were 10 minutes ahead of the peloton? So nothing has changed in the GC. Rudy Mollard is still fourth, Mikhail Kwiatkowski is still leading, Rudy Mollard is still the best climber and with only a time trial left he is already guaranteed to win this jersey. I am absolutely mad with the outcome of this stage. I wanted to challenge for the win with Sarre and the other teams basically denied that from me. It's so disappointing, why was I the only one working? And I guess I will leave Tirreno maybe without winning any stage. I still have the time trial. Let's hope that Stefan Kung is in a good condition for that one. So now going so now going for the deciding stage of Tirreno Adriatico, a 10.2 km long flat, completely flat time trial. It's not really long, so I don't expect big gaps. But of course, Rowan Dennis is the top favorite for today's stage, and being 23 seconds behind Mikhail Kwiatkowski in the GC, he may well even take the lead in this race. As for my team, I will try to do the best I can with Stefan Kung and maybe try to go for the stage win. And about Rudy Mollard, he is currently fourth in the GC, so I need to pay attention to the riders just immediately behind him. Jack Haig, Ilnur Zakarin and Woodpools are probably the biggest threats. And so the first rider from my team to start this time trial is Bruno Armirai. He's not the worst time trialist um, in my team, but on a minus three race day condition it's not going to be easy at all for him. Still, I will as usual try to use my initial riders to assess the effort level required to complete this time trial. I'm now starting the time trial with Marc Sarre. He's on a plus three race day condition and is having a 79 prologue stat. That's quite impressive. He might actually get a really decent result today. And Marc Sarre is now on the final kilometer, really approaching the finish line. He was only six seconds behind in the first intermediate checkpoint. Is third, only 12 seconds behind Alex Dowsett, who currently leads the time trial. And I'm now riding with Tobias Ludvigsen, who is on a plus 5 and is having 82 prologue. Let's see his time in the intermediate checkpoint, and he has the second best time, but tied with the best time there. That belongs to Massier Bodnar. Wow! And I think I can do even better with him in the second half of this time trial. And let's see how Tobias Ludvigsen does. He's approaching the end of his race and is going to get the best time. Three seconds ahead of Massie Bodnar. What a performance by Tobias Ludvigsen. Oh, and of course, I have a plus five with Ludvigsen and now I have a minus one with Kung. Oh, come on, PCM. You are so making fun of me. So Kung is now in the final kilometer, he was 8th in the intermediate checkpoint, let's check his time in the end, and he gets the 7th best time, 12 seconds behind. It's not a bad result considering the minus 1, but oh if he had a plus 5 today. 
And so now beginning his time trial, Rudy Molar is on a plus one, so he's having 76 prologue stat. It's, well, I think it gives him a strong chance of maintaining his top five. Let's see how he does. Now going on the intermediate checkpoint, Rudy Molar is 15 seconds behind. Jack Haig was 14 behind, Roman Bardet only 7. A great time by Roman Bardet, Ilnur Zakarin is now finishing his time trial. He loses 11 seconds to Victor Campanarts, who is now on the lead of the time trial. Roman Bardet is now finishing his race, he is going to lose 19 seconds. Now Jack Haig, how is he going to do? Is he was losing 16 seconds, so one second better than Rudy Molar. He loses loses 34. Now let's check Rudy Molar. Let's go all out now with him, and he loses 29. So I think he's going to hold on to his position. Rowan Dennis gets the best time, seven seconds faster than Victor Campanart. Now Alessandro De Marchi doing a really strong first part of the time trial. He only loses seven seconds in the end. He's keeping at least second in the race and now now let's see Kwiatkowski is losing 9 seconds so we will win the race. So the stage winner is Rowan Dennis, 8 seconds ahead of a surprising Alessandro De Marchi. Victor Campanarts was third also 8 seconds behind. My best rider was Tobias Ludvigsen, 5th 16 seconds behind Rowan Dennis. In the GC Mikhail Kwiatkowski managed to win and Rudy Mollard, he lost the top 5 for one second, a mere second. It's not what I wanted but Rudy Mollard does win the mountain classification. I didn't even aim for that, it was just by chance the first at the top of most climbs, so he takes the jersey home. Mikhail Kwiatkowski wins the points classification as well and Giulio Ciccone kept the lead in the Young Rider classification. The best overall team in this race was CCC. Oh, this is so disappointing. I missed the top 5 for one second. One second only. I was worried with Jack Haig and Woodpools, and I was overtaken by Zakarin and Roman Bardet. How did Roman Bardet do such a strong time trial today? I mean, the 6th place in Tirreno with Rudy Mollard is a really strong result, but losing the top 5 and failing the sponsor objective by just one second? Come on, you don't do this to anyone. And so guys, with this one I will bring this episode to an end. It was a really strong episode in terms of uh, results for the team. We won a stage and a GC in Paris-Nice with Thibaut Pinot. And we got a top 6 with Rudy Molar in Tirreno Adriatico. I really enjoyed these 5 stages. I hope you have too. And so if you have, please click the like button. Also, leave me a comment below. Tell me what you think I did good and wrong in this episode. What you liked and what you didn't. Also, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing to it. I would really appreciate the support. In the next episode, I will start by riding Milano Sanremo and then also ride the first few stages of Volta Ciclista Catalunya and I will most likely also ride uh, Bruges de Pan and maybe even E3 Bing Bang Classic. So I really hope to see you all for the next episode of my Groupama FTG career in Pro Cycling Manager. Bye!